Hi everybody and welcome back to Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Miss St. Louis and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District. And we are located in South St. Louis County. Today, I'm here to teach a reading lesson that's geared towards students who are in the third grade. But all learners are more than welcome to join and explore along with us. So let's get started. This week, we are talking all about text structures. And I'm so excited because it's so much fun and a really great way to help us to comprehend books. Remember, comprehension is our understanding of the text. And I really like to tell my students that it's not enough just to be able to read a book to be a good reader. We also have to understand what the author is trying to tell us. And that is where comprehension comes into play. So this week we're talking about text structures and text structures are the way an author chooses to organize information. So there's a large variety of different text structures that authors use. So each day this week, we're going to explore one of those different text structures. And today we're exploring descriptions. Now descriptions are the characteristics or details about something that could be your main character, that could be a place or an animal or a thing, right? And so what we're doing is we're describing that and a really great way to help us organize our information is with a graphic organizer. Now, graphic organizers help readers to organize their thoughts by using examples of characteristics of people, places, or things in a text. So an example of one of the graphic organizers we might use looks like this. So this is my description chart. Let me scoot over a little so you can see. And so what I have here is a very simple bubble chart. And in the middle, you can see that I have this circle and off of it branches all these other circles. So the circle in the middle, that's my topic, what I am talking about, what I am describing. And in these bubbles around, that's gonna be where my characteristics go. So let's try this out. I'm gonna need your help. I know that Halloween is coming up. So let's see if you can help me to describe one thing we might see on Halloween. And that is a pumpkin. So our topic, pumpkins, is gonna go right here in the center. What are some things you can say to describe a pumpkin? Very good, it's orange, right? We can describe its color. So I'll add that to one of my surrounding circles. What else? Ooh, they come in different sizes. That's a good one, right? We can have small pumpkins, little pumpkins. We can have huge pumpkins. So they come in different sizes. Oh, I hear somebody outing out here. We should add that up here, right? They also come in different colors, right? Like white, right? All in the lips. So that helps us to know that there might even be some more colors out there. What else do you know? They grow on vines. Very good. If you went to a pumpkin patch to get your pumpkin, you might have had to pick it off a vine, right? So they grow on vines. You can eat them, right? So we say that that's edible, right? So edible is a good vocabulary word. And edible means that it's something that we can eat, right? So it's edible, we can eat it, right? We can eat the seeds, we use pumpkin to make pumpkin pie. Very good, what else do we know about pumpkins? You can carve them, awesome. Right? Some people like to put faces, some people like to get extra creative and paint them or decorate them with beads, all sorts of things that we can do, right? So we can carve them, decorate them any sort of way. Anything else we want to add about pumpkins? Yes, they grow in the fall, right?
So this is the time when we're starting to see lots of pumpkins grow and to pop up. Very good. So this description chart helps us to get a better idea of our main topic, the pumpkin. And by looking at all of these characteristics, it helps me to get a better understanding. Now pumpkins are something a lot of us know about, but if we were reading about, let's say a person, right? And let's say we were reading about George Washington and we didn't know a lot of information about him. We could read a book and fill out a description chart to help our peers get to learn a little bit more information. This is a really great way to give information to somebody in a short amount of time, right? This way your friends don't have to go out and read all of the books on every single president. You could each take turns reading a book on a different president and then share some different facts about that president, okay? So it's a really great way to get information out there very quickly. So description charts are very helpful. Now, as we're reading, there are some keywords that you might look out for in books. And those are, for example, such as, for instance, looks like, and specifically. So those are a few, but not all of the keywords that we see in text that lead us to believe that we're gonna start to see some descriptions coming into play that we could add to our chart. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this to the test and read a book and see if we can fill out a description chart. Are you ready to put your mind to work? Let's go. All right, boys and girls. So now that we have a little bit more information in practice with our text structure of the day, let's dive into our book. Now this week, we are going to be reading a very awesome series. So each day we're gonna read a different book from this series. And that series is, Who Would Win? This is an awesome nonfiction series that focuses on two different animals and talks about what would happen if these two different animals got in a fight. So it compares the two different animals and at the end we see which one might win. So today we're going to be reading the book Hammerhead vs. Bull Shark by Jerry Pallotta. And so this one focuses on these two animals. Now we only have one description chart that we're going to be working on today. If you really wanted to be an expert, you can make one for each animal. But since we're only gonna focus on one, let's pick one of the sharks to focus on. Should we do the hammerhead shark or the bull shark? It's kind of tough, right, to make a decision because they're both really cool animals. Hmm, should we do a little any mini, miny, mo? All right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by its toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. So we landed on that hammerhead shark. So that is who we are going to focus on today. So to help us remember as we're reading that we are looking to help create a description chart about our hammerhead shark, we're gonna put him right here in the middle. Okay. So that center circle, remember, Hammer, head. Sometimes it's hard to write and talk at the same time, isn't it? This center circle tells us the main topic, right? What we are talking about. And then in these outer circles, that's where we'll add those descriptive qualities that we learn while we read the book. Okay, let me scoot this a little closer so it's a little easier for you to see. So we have the hammerhead shark. So we are looking to be able to add descriptive qualities about the hammerhead shark to our chart. So let's get started. Who would win? Hammerhead versus bull shark by Jerry Pallotta and illustrated by Rob Bolster. What would happen if a hammerhead shark came face to face with a bull shark? What if they were both the same size. What if they were both hungry? If they had a fight, who do you think would win? This is a really great time when we can make a prediction. 
Remember, a prediction is when we guess what we think is going to happen next. So we've been given this question. Who do we think would win? Hmm, let's see. Do you think the hammerhead or the bull shark would win in a fight? Hmm. Hold on to your prediction. I'm going to write mine on a sticky note and I'm going to hide it right behind my chart and we can check to see at the end if our prediction is correct. Now remember, predictions are just guesses and it's okay if our prediction isn't right because we don't have all of the information yet. And our prediction, our guess might change as we begin to learn more about these two animals throughout the book. So let's dive in. The great hammerhead shark. Its head has a strange shape. The bull shark. This shark has attacked more people than any other shark. The mako shark is the fastest swimming shark. The megamouth shark has, is a recently discovered deep water shark with a huge mouth. Remember this, fish have gills, not lungs. The whale shark is the, world's, is the largest fish in the world and it's a harmless, harmless filter feeder. The great white shark, this famous movie star needs no introduction. Right, we often see or hear about great white sharks when we um, are talking about movies. So a fact, sharks are saltwater fish, which means that they only live in salt water, right? So we wouldn't find them in any of our lakes around here because those are not salt water. Same with our rivers, right? The tiger shark, the garbage can of the sea. It eats almost everything. Well, that's a lot of different kind of sharks that are out there in our oceans. So let's learn a little bit more about our two specific sharks. The scientific name of the great hammerhead is the Symphirna morcoran. And I'm guessing at that. Meet the great hammerhead. It can grow to be 20 feet long and can weigh 1,000 pounds. Hammerhead sharks are easy to identify because they have a head shaped like a hammer. Fun fact, scientists call the hammerhead shape a cephalophoid. Did you know the largest hammerheads have the largest hammerheads have a head that is three feet wide, eyeball to eyeball. So from here to here, that's three feet wide. That's crazy. Hammerheads look scary, but they hardly ever attack humans. So we just learned a little bit about hammerheads. Is there some information we can add to our description chart? What did we learn? Well, good, they can be up to 20 feet long. Let's add that, up to 20 feet long. What else did we learn? Yeah, up to 1,000 pounds. You guys have good memory for facts. Anything else that we learned? Yeah, the head is shaped like a hammer. And it can be up to three feet long, that's right. I'm running out of space. Good, so let's add, up. Let's add that up here. So now we've got some facts, right? It's really good that as you're reading books, if you are filling out some of these graphic organizers, these charts that we use, to stop and do it as you go, right? After we read this whole book, there's gonna be so much shark information in our head. It's kind of hard to keep it all straight and remember which one belonged to which shark. It's a lot of facts. So if we fill out charts as we go, it's going to help us get obtain a better grasp of the information and keep some of that a little bit clear in our heads. So I would recommend having a piece of paper next to you with your chart drawn up that you can fill out as you go along and go page by page or chapter by chapter or section by section because that's going to be really helpful for you and save you at the end when you have to write down 
all of this information and you can't quite remember some of it. So let's move on and talk about our bull shark. The scientific name of the bull shark, the Caracanhinus lucus. Meet the bull shark. It got its name from its stocky shape and unpredictable behavior. It is an aggressive shark that lives in shallow water, preferring water less than 100 feet deep. Female bull sharks grow to be 12 feet long and to weigh 500 pounds. Interesting fact, great white sharks often get blamed for bull shark attacks. And did you know, because they live in shallow waters, bull sharks are more dangerous to people than great white sharks or tiger sharks, which prefer the deep waters. So we had some good um, vocab words up here. Unpredictable, aggressive. What do we think that means? What is something when it's unpredictable? Very good, right? That means that we don't know what's gonna happen next. When we make a prediction, we're guessing at what we think is gonna happen next, right? But if something's unpredictable, we're not gonna be able to figure out what's gonna come, okay? What about that word aggressive? What does that word mean? Yeah, it means angry, right? We're angry, we're frustrated. That's aggressive behavior, very good. Hammerheads hunt by themselves at night. During the day, they migrate in huge schools. Bull sharks prefer to be alone. Bonus fact, despite their solitary nature, bull sharks sometimes hunt in twos. And a little shark trivia, the bull shark has many names, Zambaze shark, estuary shark, java shark, and there's lots more names for that shark. Pretty cool. So should we add anything to our chart up here? Yeah, they hunt by themselves at night and they travel in schools by the day. So, hunt by self at night. Travel in schools by day. Now when they say schools, do we mean a school like where we go to to learn? No, right? School is another name for their group, right? And we might have heard of that before when we talk about schools of fish. Types of hammerheads. Fun fact, the funny shape allows them to have more sensors. Hammerheads can smell better and sense fish better than other sharks. So there's the bonehead, the great, the scalloped, and the smooth. Did you know some other head and some other hammerhead species are the scoop head, golden, golden hammerhead, white fin, hammerhead, winged headed shark, and scalloped bonnet head. The bull shark travels. Bull sharks swim in shallow coastal water. They often swim in estuaries and up freshwater rivers. A bull shark was found 1,000 miles up the Mississippi River. So we've got a little map here to show us, and that's in between Iowa and Illinois. So even farther up north than Missouri. Isn't that crazy? A bull shark was also once caught 3,000 miles up the Amazon River. Shark trivia. Using DNA testing, sharks in Lake Nicaragua, South America, and sharks in the Zimbabwe River, Africa, have been identified as bull sharks. So they are all over the world. If you were scuba diving and a hammerhead swam at you, this is what it would look like. Interesting fact, hammerheads have swam the Earth's ocean for more than 20 million years. And did you know, the unusual location of hammerheads' eyes allow them to see above, below, and all around. And if you were skin diving and a bull shark swam right at you, this is what you would see. Yikes! Fun fact, bull sharks' heads are whiter than they are long, right? So this is why, right? And this, um, whew, now I'm getting confused. We've got wide, right? How wide something is, sometimes how long, right? And how tall. So we've got different units of measurement. Did you know bull sharks are known for bumping their prey first? After the bump, they decide if they want to bite. Ooh, let's look at these teeth. Hammerhead tooth. Compared to other sharks, 
Hammerheads have small mouths, but hammerheads, like all sharks, have scary looking teeth. So here are some of the other shark teeth we see, like a tiger shark, a lemon shark. The bull shark tooth has pointy bottom teeth and triangular top teeth. Its mouth is shaped like a knife and fork. The bottom teeth hold the fish it catches and the top jaw goes back and forth. It cuts like a saw. Ooh, look at that whale shark, it's got little bitty teeth. We can barely even see that. A crocodile shark, ooh. Lots of scary teeth here, huh? Yeah, scary looking teeth. The anatomy of the hammerhead. So he's got his body, his head, his gills, right? This is a really good looking diagram that labels all the different parts. And so anatomy, ooh, good vocab word. Anatomy means the parts of a plant or animal. And here we see the hammerhead, how long it can get to be. So each square represents one foot, so it can get up to be 20 feet long, right? And we have that up here on our description chart already. And down here we can see the anatomy of that bull shark. So they've got a lot of the same body parts. And he's a little bit smaller, isn't he? When engineers design aircrafts, sometimes all they have to do is look at nature. To some people, this shark's head looks like a hammer. At certain angles, the head looks more like an airplane wing. The wing-shaped head gives the shark stability when it is swimming. Ooh, maybe we should add that to our description chart, right? So it is stable when swimming, right? Because of its head. It's a good fact to add to our chart. You can say that the space shuttle was designed by nature millions of years ago. Fun fact, aircraft engineers study aerodynamics. Look at the shape and design of the bull shark. And another interesting fact, the jaws of larger sharks are twice as powerful as the jaws of a lion. Shark tails, the great hammerhead and the bull shark are different sharks, but their tails are similar. Take a look. Right, so similar, right, means that they look the same. A shark uses its tail to propel itself forward. It steers with its tail and its side fins. Fun fact, a ragged tooth shark can touch its tail with its nose. How cool is that? Bonus fact, almost all sharks have a vertical tail. So vertical, right, means that it, it goes, vertical means that it goes side to side. Horizontal means it goes up and down. Lots of math terms in this book too. Oh, no, now that Miss St. Louis is saying that, she's realizing she said it backwards. Horizontal means that it goes side to side and vertical means it goes up and down, right? Vertical up and down, horizontal side to side. Sorry I got that so confused. Shark friends. Sharks and pilot fish are friends. For example, pilot fish eat parasites off the shark's skin. Pilot fish get to eat the shark's leftover food and scraps. And pilot fish stay safe from predators by swimming with the shark. Sharks have rough skin, it's like armor, and they have teeth on their skin called denticles. Shark hitchhikers. Remoras are fish that hitch a ride on the shark. Remoras have a suction disc and attach themselves. They're also called shark suckers. This is that remora, it's a little fish. Icky fact, some parasitic copods and worms attach themselves to sharks. Yuck. Things a hammerhead shark can't do. They can't sing like Elvis, they can't parachute, and they can't ride a bicycle. Things a bull shark can't do, they can't yo-yo, they can't paint like Michelangelo, and they can't bake cupcakes. A giant hammerhead is cruising along. A bull shark is looking for food. The hammerhead shark sees the bull shark, but is not interested. Huge sharks are not his type of food. The hammerhead looks for something smaller and easier to eat. The bull shark feels threatened and is not afraid to pick a fight. He swims right at the hammerhead. The bull shark opens its mouth and tries to ram the hammerhead. The hammerhead's better eyesight allows him to turn and avoid the bull shark. The hammerhead dodges away. 
The bull shark is angry and darts at the hammerhead again. The hammerhead ducks. Both sharks are excellent swimmers. The bull shark attacks again, and this time it bites the hammerhead's tail. The hammerhead turns to defend itself, but the bull shark catches a piece of the hammerhead's tail and rips off a chunk. The hammerhead is bleeding and can't swim fast. His blood excites the bull shark even more. At full speed, the bull shark rams the hammerhead and knocks him off balance. The bull shark bites the hammerhead a few more times. The hammerhead is defeated. The bull shark will eat him. Other sharks in the area can smell the meal. The bull shark won today, and maybe the next time these two species meet, the hammerhead will recognize the danger right away. And that is the end. So let's double check your predictions. Who did you think would win? I said I thought the hammerhead shark would win. And my prediction wasn't correct, but that's totally okay, right? Sometimes our predictions are wrong, and that's all good. So while we were doing this, we filled out our description chart. We still have an open circle, which means that we can always go back and look for more information in our book to help us complete our chart. So remember the purpose of a description chart, right? A graphic organizer like this is to help us understand the characteristics of a character or um, a main thing in our book, right? We could have done a building, a place, in this case, we chose one of the animals from our Who Would Win book. And so this description chart tells us all about the hammerhead shark. So we can see how long he gets, how heavy, what he looks like, some of his activities, right? How he travels, some fun facts about him. So by looking at this, it gives me a little bit more information about this animal in a simpler way, right? Now I can tell my friends all about the really cool hammerhead shark. So my friends, today we talk about one of our text structures and we talked about description. And we used that when we read one of our nonfiction books from the Who Would Win series. I hope my friends that you were able to get some information from this and that you try using this graphic organizing yourself, whether you're reading fiction or nonfiction books, you can make description charts. I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow as we dive into a different text structure and read another Who Would Win book. But until I see you again, I hope that you have a great night and we'll see you again next time. Bye everybody, thanks for coming. is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.